Hello everyone. I am Preet and welcome once again to Relevant Myths where I'll be decoding and explaining all stories ranging from movies to mythology and sports to politics. In this video, we'll discuss the entire timeline of the two Indian epics, Ramayana and Mahabharat, and how, unlike popular belief, the stories have changed significantly through history, geography, politics, and language, and are not the same today as they were first created. Now, there are multiple ways of finding the timeline of Ramayana and Mahabharat, but we will be doing it through the historical or factual timeline. where we will be moving from past to present while discussing acceptable historical archaeological and scientific data before we begin a disclaimer that the dates which i will discuss are not exact and the timeline itself is not according to any scale so without any further delay let's get started According to historians the Vedic civilization thrived in the Gangetic plains almost 3000 years ago from 1500 to 600 BCE which is called the Vedic period before that was the Indus Valley civilization which was at its peak from 3000 to 1800 BCE but that's too early for anything written to be found so let's jump back to the Vedic period in this time actual kingdoms or more specifically janpads namely kuru panchal magad vidhay kausal etc were present which are very integral in the stories of ramayan and mahabharat kuru kings like parikshit and janmajay who also appear in the mahabharat were historically present during this time too so the main basis of the two stories and its context had been created during the vedic period they weren't popular stories but they were definitely composed during this time Now the first reference to Ramayan and Mahabharat in any written text is found in Panini's great grammar book Ashtadhyay which was written around 500 BCE just after the end of the Vedic period Now Ashtadhyay introduced the newer classical Sanskrit which was a successor of the older Vedic Sanskrit and it became quite popular so all major writing done after that time was done in classical Sanskrit Now if we check the language in all the earliest versions of Ramayana and Mahabharat which have been found they are all written in classical Sanskrit this means that they were written down at least after 500 BCE remember this doesn't mean the text didn't exist before that they did but they weren't written down they were transmitted from guru to disciple and by traveling bards to common people in an oral way so When we reach 500 BCE things start to get really interesting a struggle which had been occurring in Indian culture for quite some time took center stage when two people were born these were Mahavir and Gautam Buddha who brought the shraman tradition or the herbal tradition into the limelight from which Buddhism and Jainism started to originate more people started rejecting the teachings of the Vedas and the householder life and were drawn towards Buddhism which said that renouncing everything doing penance in the forest and becoming hermit was the way to life now the other side was made of kings businessmen and the brahmins who were all part of the society and followers of the householder tradition which said that living as a householder with family performing one's duties and serving others was the way to life so this sudden rise of hermit tradition made them quite worried as if everyone would just leave everything and start doing penance then who will run the society so ramayan and mahabharat which were tales of family kings money and property were popularized and written down around the same time as a way of countering the hermit tradition and turning people back into the householder tradition also in the same time alexander the great came to india from macedonia and in india the mauryan empire was formed as well as destroyed so all this happened between 200 bce to 200 ce when ramayan and mahabharat were actually written down and we find some literature surrounding them as well this period is called early classical period which is just after the end of the vedic period Now from 200 CE to 600 CE the Gupta Empire was at its peak and the famous silk route which connected the entire Europe to India and China was also functional 
spice trade was soaring and under the gupta kings there was a large increase in cultural creativity literature architecture sculptures and painting this was also the time when india was the world's biggest economy and was also called sone ki chidiya this period is called classical period during this time ramayana and mahabharat were becoming more and more popular throughout the entire aryan land due to increased interest in literature various small episodes commentaries and retellings of ramayana and mahabharat have been found which were written during this time in various texts such as pasas pratima natak which details ram's coronation and kaikeyi's two boons kalidas's masterpiece abhigyan shakuntalam the love story of shakuntala and dushyant and also the story of their son bharat who was an ancestor of the kauravas and pandavas pasas urubhanga or story of the breaking of thighs where bhim kills duryodhan by breaking his thighs and pasas abhishek natak where dasharath is blessed with four sons after conducting the putra prapti yagya in the south too literature was growing because of the 500 year long sangam period tamil literature grew considerably which laid the foundation for ramayan and mahabharat to grow in the dravidian kingdoms in future now the period between 600 ce to 1000 ce is called late classical period or early medieval period During this time the ongoing struggle between hermits and householders was won overwhelmingly by the householders because of the widespread popularity of Ramayana and Mahabharat and the hermit traditions of Buddhism and Jainism took a back seat Ramayana and Mahabharat became so popular that they were being retold in different regional languages till then it was mostly Sanskrit but in order to reach the text to more common people they were being retold in different regional languages This was quite visible in 1000 CE when the first popular regional version was written in Tamil language. Various regional versions followed with various authors writing them from 1000 CE to 1500 CE in the late medieval period. Some of the most famous and important retellings are Tamil Kamban Ramayana, Odia Dandi Ramayana, Bengali Krithivasa Ramayana, Odia Sada Das's Mahabharat, Avadhi Tulsi Das's Ramcharit Manas. Assamese Saptakand Ramayana, Konkani Ramayanu, Bengali Kashiram Das's Mahabharat and Kashmiri Ramvatar Charit. During this time lots of Islamic rulers and conquerors started occupying land in North India and the Delhi Sultanates were also formed during this time. This was a time of war and turmoil which resulted in negligence on literature. In this time the Rajputs of Mewar were also in prominence but they were a warring community as the country was in a state of war but in the south the Vijayanagara empire was developing which served as the center for India's classical period ideas even after Islamic rulers had captured most of North India Then came the early modern period from 1500 to 1857 CE which saw the rise and fall of the Mughal empire in India as well as the beginning of British colonial rule through East India Company although this period was also stained with war and turmoil during the reign of Akbar literature and art again gained prominence he translated Ramayana and Mahabharat into Urdu and Persian which exposed them to an entirely new group of people Ramayan was translated in Urdu as Pothi Ramayan and Mahabharat was translated in Persian as Rajamnama or the Book of War. But during the reign of Aurangzeb literature was again neglected and even destroyed. Owing to Aurangzeb's cruel methods the Sikhs and Marathas battled him for quite some time and at last succeeded. The Mughal dynasty's importance grew less and less and the British East India Company became more and more prominent. They wiped out the last of the Mughals and were also able to defeat the Sikhs and the Marathas and attained the most power in the country. This resulted in the revolt of 1857 after which all power was transferred from East India Company to the British Crown. Now, in order to understand Indian culture, the Britishers also employed translators to translate India's greatest works in English. The first complete translation of Ramayana in English was done by Ralph T H Griffith and of Mahabharat was done by Kesari Mohan Ganguly 
which is also called Mahabharat by Krishna Dwayapayan Vyas with Vyas's full name. After 1858, Indian independence movement accelerated and finally India attained independence in 1947 and became a nation state with secular democracy. Now, the final event in this long historical timeline of Ramayana and Mahabharat can be attributed to the 1980s TV shows on them, which made them uniformly famous throughout the entire country once again. There are of course B R Chopra's Mahabharat and Ramanand Sagar's Ramayana, which we are watching even today. Before I end the video, here is an exciting little fun fact. Sage Valmiki is widely regarded as the author of Ramayana and Ved Vyas as the author of Mahabharat. So you would think that the Ramayana we know today would obviously be the Valmiki Ramayana, right? Well, if you were watching Ramanand Sagar's Ramayana carefully on DD National, then you might have seen that in the title credits it is written that the show is inspired from Tulsi Das's Avadi language Ram Charitmanas. Did you know that Tulsidas himself wasn't even inspired from the Valmiki Ramayana, but instead from another version of the Ramayana called Adhyatma Ramayana, which is found in the Brahman Puran? And what to guess? Who wrote the Brahman Puran? Well, the answer is Ved Vyas, who of course wrote the Mahabharat, not the Ramayana. So in actuality, the version of the Ramayana we all know today is not Valmiki's version. but instead ved vyas's version thank you so much to everyone for watching the entire video if you like my content please like the video comment your thoughts down in the comment section below subscribe to relevant myths and hit the bell icon in order to receive notifications whenever a new video is dropped share this video to as many people as possible and you can also follow the channel's instagram facebook and twitter accounts all the links are in the description below once again thank you for watching have an awesome day